Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the 30 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And as you can see here, we are correcting back from that near 32 level, 30, 31. This is where we're meeting. I'll show you when we get out to the daily where we're meeting that resistance trend line. And uh, we're sort of rolling over here to the downside. Now, one of the encouraging things about this is that, uh, as I pointed out in previous videos, that uh, we're beginning to uh, enter into a bull market phase. And this is indicated by the uh, MACD indicator. So you can see you get a, a buy signal right here at this point. And we have another buy signal here we had a buy signal there so you can see this is a very valid buy signal and this one is still a valid buy signal we're still above it whereas the sell signals you can see there's a sell signal there and we were basically flat there was a sell signal there immediate failure another sell signal here immediate failure another sell signal here and uh, again complete failure of that signal. So that's going to be an indication that we are beginning to roll up to the bull market uh, phase of this. Now could we correct here? Uh, yes we could but I would like to point out that we are already coming very close to an oversold condition. That's with very little price correction but significant correction in the MACD. That's the sort of thing that you see when you're rolling up into a bull phase. Uh, the buy indicators start to be very valid. The sell indicators become completely invalid. So the sell indicator that we're watching very carefully is this one here. It is currently valid and we're actually getting a decent decline. Now the decline is not taking us at this point below the support of this last rally but we're getting close so this is a key decision point here if we're going to turn and rally up and break through a lot of resistance or if we're going to roll over and begin to get valid sell signals and invalid buy signals so a very critical week in the price of silver here technically we need to watch this very closely and see what it does now on to the main story of the night. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this story because it's one that uh, just uh, comes up very frequently. I'm going to start out with the announcement. This was covered by Silver Doctors and this is the announcement that China is going to spend 800 billion pounds of stimulus. I think that's a trillion something but as we get down to the meat of the article we'll see that there's actually quite a bit more stimulus going to be going on as well and uh, it says uh, China has announced a total of 8 trillion yuan or 800 billion pounds of stimulus projects to try to boost confidence in an economy that appears to be cooling faster than expected now remember this phrase cooling uh, cooling simply means that it's uh, not as hot one Chinese province after another has stepped forward over the last fortnight to announce their plans in what appears to be a propaganda effort to reassure the public that the economy is still on track. Meanwhile, Wen Jiaobo, the Chinese premier, promised over the weekend that the Chinese government would intensify its efforts to boost the economy in the second half of the year. On a visit to Guangdong, province, the heartland of China's export industry, Mr. Wen warned that there will still be a lot of problems and uncertainties in exports going forward. The third quarter is a crucial period. Analysts said the government could now steer the value of the yuan lower after a gain of 4.7% last year against the dollar. Further export tax rebates could also be used to bail out manufacturers. China's export sector is suffering from anemic demand from Europe and the United States. So uh, we're told here that we have anemic demand, which is uh, barely uh, positive, one would assume, from that. Uh, but let's look at the numbers. In the first seven months, exports rose 7.8%, while
while imports rose 6.4 percent. So exports are growing uh, and they're growing significantly faster than imports, leaving China in danger of missing its 10 percent target for trade growth this year. Oh, heavens no. Uh, that's a terrible recession coming. <laughs> if they don't make that 10% figure. July's exports grew at the lowest pace since 2009. That's in bold. And there are reports of factory workers leaving and returning to their home provinces for the first time since the financial crisis. So it's a financial crisis when we uh, uh, only grow 7.8%. The Telegraph has traveled to the south of China over recent days to witness a slowdown in the coastal economy and the export sector also areas which are flourishing and also to areas which are flourishing with new investment and where the local economy is booming the picture appears mixed China geographically almost the same size as the Eurozone appears to be struggling in some areas and flourishing in others a new inland corridor running from uh, Lai Laoning in the north to Guizhou in the south through cities such as Wuhan and Changsha is booming. In response, Guangdong has unveiled 177 core projects worth 1 trillion yuan. Okay, that's one province. Joining a long list of local governments to announce stimulus plans. The huge cities of Chongqing and Tianjin, meanwhile, both said they would spend 1.5 trillion. Okay, these are cities. And they're talking about spending 1.5 trillion yuan. I think the uh, ratio is 6 to 1. Let's just say 6 to 1. So uh, this is going to be a $250 billion worth of spending. Now, compare this to your bankrupt municipalities and bankrupt cities in America. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's absurd. Well, Guizhou, one of China's poorest provinces, has said it will spend 3 trillion yuan on ecotourism, creating a series of national parks. The central government, meanwhile, said it would spend, uh, said it would spend to plow 2.4 trillion yuan into reducing carbon emissions and energy conservation programs over the next three years. Boy, that looks like a real slowdown and has already set aside 26 billion yuan in subsidies to encourage consumers to switch to low energy appliances. The roll call of announcements may be a signal that after uh, after half a year of fine-tuning monetary policy the government is preparing to take more drastic measures. While the Communist Party has penciled in a slower growth of 7.5 percent for this year in order to restructure and rebalance the economy. There are indications that China may suffer and may already have suffered a hard landing where growth would fall below 7%. So that's a hard landing when you're talking about China. Um, if we saw growth of 7% in the United States, uh, it, people wouldn't even know what to do with the news. Um, they're so busy cooking the books. Uh, you see story after story about how, well, the recovery is not doing so well. I thought we were already out of the recession in 2009. Uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous uh, to compare these numbers. Uh, the United States uh, would be lucky to have one quarter of 7% growth uh, in the next 10 years. So it's just uh, absurd. Uh, quote, a hard landing in China would would look like the fourth quarter of 2008 and the first quarter of 2009 when exports collapsed. Factories had no orders and migrant workers were laid off by the tens of millions, says Wang Tao, an, an economist at UBS, of course. Mr. Wen said many negative factors would continue to affect stable economic operations in the second half, that the difficulties of boosting growth are still relatively large. Facing the current difficulties, we have to improve the operating environment for companies and enhance the corporate confidence, he said. Many of the new stimulus projects appear to be simply restatements of existing commitments, and there was no indication how they will be funded. However, economists at Barclays Capital said that unlike the boom in infrastructure spending after the financial crisis, the projects are aimed at boosting China's technological capabilities and its domestic consumption. Quote, these plans have a reasonable quality control, they said, and in note, adding that whether or not the plans were new or old, bringing them forward would be helpful in offsetting the headwinds from external demand deceleration. 
that's interesting that uh, the external demand from Europe and America is described as anemic, but China is still growing at a 7 plus percent growth rate. So is this already coming to pass? Several economists remain confident that China will continue its blistering growth for several years to come. Justin Yifu Lin, the former chief economist at the World Bank, predicted that the Chinese economy would continue its high growth rate for another 20 to 30 years. Mr. Wen also said that despite the problems, China's economic fundamentals have not changed. He added, we have a lot of good conditions and optimistic factors that will help stabilize growth. So. There's the another Western hit piece against China, uh, which is absolutely crushing the United States as far as economic growth. And of course, their exports continue to grow. Their trade surpluses continue to grow. They have the cash to have real stimulus as opposed to American stimulus, which is fake stimulus from printed money that is borrowed. Uh, it can't even be borrowed because no one's willing to lend anymore. It's just printed up and it's hyperinflationary paper petrodollars. So let's look at some of what China is doing. Now this is a very famous uh, map of Africa that appeared on Stratfor and is covered uh, at various places, uh, Zero Hedge as well as some other places. And you can see this documents the investments that China is making currently in Africa. You can see by the color codes here, if it's red, it's more than $10 billion in investment uh, than $5 billion, $1 billion. So you can see significant Chinese investments are going on in Africa. Now you can see by the uh, key here that you have railroads being built, uh, oil and natural gas, that's the primary course, then railroads, then mining, then we have hydroelectric dams. You can see here's a dam being built in the Congo, here's a dam being built in Cameroon, uh, we have dams being built in Ethiopia, South Sudan. You can see the incredible amount of uh, Chinese uh, infrastructure building going on in Zambia, Zimbabwe, in South Africa, all over Africa. China is making infrastructure investments. Now I tried to do a little bit of research on the uh, Chinese dam building and this is actually an article from the internationalrivers.org. Of course this is some kind of left-wing uh, environmentalist uh, interest. So uh, they're going to have that slant here, but you can see they actually cover the Chinese dams that are being built. Uh, Chinese corporations, financial institutions, and the government are involved in billions of dollars worth of large dams in Africa. Civil society and dam affected people's movements are concerned that China's poor record on protecting human rights and environment could mean trouble for African rivers now targeted for Chinese built large dams. Africa is a growing source of raw materials for China's industrial sector as well as marketplace for Chinese goods. Chinese companies are heavily involved in many fields, oil, mining, logging, and infrastructure. Unlike Western financiers, China's assistance comes with almost no strings attached. And uh, they go over some of these projects. There's the uh, dam in uh, Sudan. Uh, we're talking about an extra 174 uh, I'm sorry, I was looking for the megawatts. Here it is, 360 megawatts. Uh, Zambia is going to add 660 megawatts, 750 megawatts, $600 million investment. Here's Ethiopia, the Tekizi Hydroelectric Dam, 300 uh, megawatts. Uh, there's Mozambique, Nigeria, and uh, billion, $2.5 billion loan. Ghana, uh, the Republic of Congo, Gabon. So you've got a lot of complaining here from the left. And it's not really the left. It's what I would call the world elitists, the people who have ceded over U.S. national parks to the U.N. 
as uh, wildlife zones. Of course, these people don't care about the African people. Uh, they don't care that the African people will be tremendously benefited by rails, roads, dams, uh, electricity, uh, modern uh, appliances and conveniences uh, because these people don't care about the African people. Uh, they view Africa as a gigantic park and a place where the elites can go and play and hunt and um, go and have their charities and observe uh, the Africans in their native habitat, of course, because they don't really view these people as people. It's just ridiculous and absurd that uh, the Chinese would be criticized for building infrastructure in Africa. And of course, uh, if you look at the history of Africa, uh, the United States in the recent uh, Cold War era, uh, basically the United States and the Soviet Union have been fighting proxy wars over Africa and uh, the United States or the Soviet Union would pay off dictators or the UN as well or the World Bank would uh, loan tremendous amounts of money to corrupt dictators or put corrupt dictators in power or overthrow elected uh, representatives that wanted to improve the lives of the people in Africa but uh, no the United States and the Soviet Union were more interested in just having proxy wars in the continent of Africa and not doing anything to improve the lives of the African people and as we can see here China with not too many strings attached uh, is building a tremendous amount of infrastructure in Africa using all the money that they've earned by manufacturing in their own country so it's really kind of a pathetic thing to see someone like Hillary Clinton over in Africa uh, touting the Coney story and things like that trying to get the right to fly drones over Africa so that I guess we can spy on what the Chinese are building over there of course for the last uh, many decades we could have been building infrastructure in Africa to actually help the African people rather than setting up puppet dictators who would uh, loot the country's wealth and hide it in European and American banks so that's what's going on in Africa as China is moving ahead and I think China is doing all the right things and uh, I think that yes there are many abuses and there are problems I'm not gonna lessen those things but I think overall a building of roads rails dams electric power and infrastructure in Africa is gonna tremendously benefit the African people in the long run. Now here's a story from Nigeria first and this is just one story that's talking about uh, dam completion. This is the Mambilla Hydro Power Plant and uh, you can see the Vice President here, Vice President Namadi Sambo at a meeting with the Presidential Committee on the Mambilla Power Project consultants on Monday July 12th instructed that the 2600 megawatts Mambilla hydro project hydropower project located in Gembu Taraba state be completed immediately so uh, it's not like uh, the Chinese are invading Africa and you can see here uh, we have the Africa Development Bank the Islamic Development Bank and uh, they're providing billions of dollars to try to build this infrastructure in Africa so very important things going on in Africa and China of course not being covered by the Western press uh, it seems that China is uh, doing a slow checkmate here uh, by uh, buying the uh, alliances of these countries by building infrastructure by partnering with the governments to actually improve the lives of the African people and of course the World Bank and the UN and the uh, world government leftists and uh, communists who uh, use uh, the environmentalism as a way of holding the advancement of Africa down uh, are very upset at this obviously so big things going on over there and of course uh, we are treated to another story about this supposed slowdown in China 
and uh, heaven forbid if China actually slows down to a 7% growth rate uh, they'll call that a crash so back to the silver price uh, we're looking very closely at this rounding bottom here on the MACD if we do get the move up on this bottom you can see that we're actually oversold to match a point all the way back to the 2nd of August and uh, you can see the rally that we had here when we weren't nearly as oversold we actually rallied from about 28 all the way up to 31 and a quarter so it's quite possible that we could get another rally here that would take us another three or four dollars we could easily run through 32 up to 34 even up to 36 with the next run here if this is a continuation of that bull move and we'll talk to you next time